This video will cover the loft tool. Lofts are features that are created by using multiple closed sketches that are located on different planes. These sketches must be sketched in different sketches. And these sketches must be selected in sequential order. The direction and the selection of the sketches does not make a difference, but they do need to be consistently chosen. To create a loft, from the Boss group on the Part Modeling ribbon, select Loft Boss. In the work area, select the sketches or faces to use in the loft. As you make the selections, the corresponding labels appear in the cross sections box. The sketches can be chosen 123 or 321, but not 132 or 312. The sketches need to be chosen in a linear manner. Otherwise, when the loft feature is attempted, it will result in a feature that cannot be made. The sketches or faces must be listed in the order in which the loft will be created. To remove a sketch or face from the box, select it again, or right click the item to remove it from the dialog box, and select Remove Selected Items from the pop up menu. Click OK to create the loft. From the final feature, you can clearly see the individual shapes that were lofted together. You can see the transition between the sketches as the feature changes from a square to a polygon to a circle. If you edit one of the sketches and make it larger or smaller, when you exit out of sketch mode, the lofted part will automatically update using the new parameters of the sketch. Fine tuning options in the dialog box. Now we'll look at some of the other available options and how and why they're used. First, we'll go over the technical definitions that refer to the loft dialog box. Cross sections. The sketch face. This column will be populated with the sketches that are going to be lofted. Specify tangent. If this option is checked, the next two options will be accessible. Tangent magnitude. Controls the rate at which the surface diverges from the cross section. Tangent angle. This option is used only for sketches and not for faces. The value represents the angle the lofted surface would be at if the sketch plane were normal. General Options Minimize Twist Aligns the profile between the first and second sketch. Minimize Curvature Determines the tangent magnitude based upon the maximum or minimum radius of the entire lofted body. Simplify Surface Converts the surface from spline data to analytical data. Connect Ends Treats the first sketch as if it were also the last sketch. At least three cross sections must be used and it cannot be used in combination with guide curves, because guide curves can be used to do this. Guide Curves Text Box This is where the guide curves will be populated. You can have a combination of 2D and 3D guide curves, or only 2D or 3D guide curves. The only requirement is that a single path needs to be created in its own sketch. Type Global Creates virtual guide curves which affects the entire lofted body. Local the guide curve will only affect the area that is located in close proximity to the guide curve. Tangent. The lofted surface does not necessarily follow the guide curve, but uses a best fit logarithm. Tangent magnitude. These same three sketches are lofted together in the next two example images. The only differences between these three resulting parts are the options that are selected. Notice how changing some of the options will give you a drastically different part. Example 1, the top image. It's created by simply lofting only the three sketches together. No options, such as specified tangent, were applied. The dialog with the settings used to create this loft is shown to the right of this loft. In example 2, the lower image, specified tangent was selected for sketch number 1. The value for the tangent magnitude is 5. This value does not have a definite representation. In other words, this is a relative value. In this example, with the size of the sketches and their location relative to one another, small values will be easily seen in the model. In other sketches, larger values may need to be used for the changes in the model to be readily seen. You may need to experiment a little bit to obtain the results you're looking for. Also keep in mind that the values that work for one loft may not necessarily work for another loft. Tangent Angle the next three examples will show how the tangent angle is used in a loft. The part in example number one, the top image, was created by sketching a circle on the XY plane 
and creating an offset plane one inch from the XY plane. The only sketch entity is a sketch node that was placed at the origin. The circle and sketch node were then lofted together. In number two, the center image, you can see how changing the value of the tangent angle to 90 resulted in the pointed top becoming a spherical shape. Example number three shows how drastically a part can change by entering in values for other sketches. In this example, the value of negative 90 was used for the circle sketch. The sketch in the lower left is mushroomed out at the bottom because the loft comes off the circle at negative 90 degrees, then lofts to the point. The lower right part was produced by reversing these tangent angle values for the two sketches. Loft Guide Curves Often with lofts, it's advisable to add guide curves to help achieve the exact shape you need. Guide curves help the loft by using the guide curve as a path. The guide curves can be sketched either as 2D or as 3D sketch figures. The guide curves have to intersect all the sketches that are used in the lofts. The easiest way to do this is to sketch the lofting profiles first and add the guide curves afterwards. When adding the guide curves, sketch constraints should be used so there's no doubt that the guide curves intersect the actual sketches. Note, unlike a sweep, the guide curves cannot simply intersect the profile of the sketch. In these two figures, you can see that the guide curve in the example on the left does intersect the middle profile, so it fails. In the example on the right, the guide curve does not intersect the middle profile, so the loft works fine. Once the guide curves intersect all of the profiles on the loft, you'll have a choice of three different options for the type of guide curve. All three parts in the lower part of this image were created from the same sketches and guide curves as shown in the upper portion of this image. The only item that was changed was the type of guide curve. Notice the difference between the three different options. Different types of guide curves produce very different results. General Options The options in the General Options section of the dialog box can also produce drastically different parts. These general options can be used in conjunction with the other available options in the loft. Minimize Twist As the name suggests, this option will attempt to make the loft smoother by minimizing any twist when the surfaces are lofted together. By default, this option should be selected for almost all cases. The figure on the left was created by lofting polygons with the Minimize Twist option unchecked. The same model is shown on the right. The only difference between these models is that the example on the right uses the Minimize Twist option. Minimize Curvature Using a previous example on the left, you can see the difference in the model on the right when the Minimize Curvature option is used. This option basically negates all of the options that are used in the Specify Tangent section of the dialog box. This option is unselected in the figure on the left so the specified tangent values are being used to create the model. The figure on the right shows what the same model looks like when the Minimize Curvature option is used. Connect Ends This option is used to connect the last sketch to the first sketch. At least three sketches must be used in the creation of the loft, otherwise this option will not be accessible. The figure on the left was created without this option. The figure on the right did use this option. Keep in mind that it is important that the sketches be as equally spaced as possible. This video covered the loft tool. Lofts are features that are created by using multiple closed sketches that are located on different planes. These sketches must be sketched in different sketches. These sketches must be selected in sequential order. The direction and the selection of the sketches does not make a difference but they do need to be consistently chosen. There are several fine-tuning options available when creating lofts. Basic lofts can be created without the use of guide curves, but guide curves provide a greater degree of control and flexibility in the creation of more complex lofts.